Hey folks, Little Landstrider here, and welcome back to another episode of Diary of a Techno Wizard in the unabridged mod pack on the Primus server. Okay, today folks, we got lots to get through, lots to show you. So uh, not too much down here. Not too much. Um, got my uh, tier 5 blood orb, my Archmage's blood orb, and I've also upgraded the blood altar to a tier 5 with all the extra runes of sacrifice to go along with it. So um, beacons are really not too difficult. Just a little bit of grinding over there to get the skulls at that at the grinder that someone so kindly set up and then take them over to the wither cage and kill me a few withers and that's how I got, got that done relatively easily. And I've also added, I turned this off while I was doing my intro because I didn't want the noisy uh, zombies behind me. You can see that I added a drawbridge here with some glowstone in it that allows me to shut down this spawner. I think I might add another another spawn cage in there, I think. So I'm turn that back on now, though, uh, so that I get continuous blood. Um, the reason I get continuous blood, even when I'm not here, is because underneath the bottom spawner, I've actually got a piece of cursed earth. So that gives me a continuous feed of blood, even when I'm not online, because this area is loaded. And you can see over on the side that my blood pool is about half full. And with the Archmage's Blood Orb, that's like 500,000 blood or something like that. Actually, I don't have my my uh, division, divination sigil anymore, so I can't check the precisely. But the meter over there on the side gives me a good indication of what, you know about what it's at. So it can go up to 10 million now with the, uh, with the latest Blood Orb. So up here we can see that there's actually some walls into this room now so uh and I, I i set this up i'll talk about that here in a minute but that's in a real bad place and it's not going to stay there very long so did a little bit more uh infusion because uh well i had a couple requests for some things i still got to get some other things done um i got a couple wands and and uh, foci for some folks that have put in some orders we'll uh we'll go pick up the payment for that here in a little bit uh, but I want to show you this over here. What do we got going over here? So I have a simple automation for, um, I guess they call this node boiling, bo 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 bullying, bullying. Yeah, that's terrible. That's hard for me to say. Um, so I'm feeding this these nodes to this one, basically. The one in the center is the one that is being fed, and these ones off to the sides are the ones that are getting um, sucked in slowly. Now, I've actually got the this automation shut off because this node is actually um, got enough of the aspects that I want. So they're all over 36 and none of them are above 49. So that's actually going to work out pretty perfectly. It should produce me a um, uh, empowered node. I, I think that's what they call it, node empowering. It should produce me an empowered node with about six centivis each. And we'll, we'll get into what all that means here in a little bit. But basically I used... Um, the Automagi Viz Reader and a remote comparator to read the Viz that's in that node. See, when I look at it, it tells me. Uh, and that produces a redstone signal based off of how, um, you know, the uh, aspects in that node. And I'll just show you real quick what I got it set to. This is a really simple version of this automation. It's just set to any low, which means that uh, it basically the lower the signal or the lower the uh, the lower the aspects the weaker the signal is going to end up being because I also have it oh no I don't have it reverted so as the uh, as the the node drains down this redstone signal gets weaker and weaker you can see that it's right now it's like it's at full power because these think this is fully recharged. This one should be the same thing. It's just, yeah, it's at full power because this one's fully recharged to its uh, current maximum. Uh, but as this one would draw down the node, the redstone signal get weaker and weaker until it reaches so low that the... Uh... Am I saying it backwards? Yeah. Until it reaches so low that the uh, that the node stabilizer will kick in and prevent it from being completely sucked up so 
the aspect won't go down to zero until there's almost no aspect left in it and then it will go all the way down to zero and eventually this one will eat them all the way up but with this little automation I get the maximum uh, amount of transfer into the main node now this node is actually going to get moved and to do that I've got some uh, let's see what are they what are they called they are called um, where's it at I got all my stuff in here there it is teleposers so I got myself a teleposer uh, from blood magic remember I, I don't know if I remember if I made those on, on the camera or not last time but made some tel teleposers those you just get by um, putting a ender pearl in a blood altar and then the actual teleposer itself is to use one of these shovel position foci and more ender pearls and some gold. You have to have the teleposer. You have to have two teleposers and a teleposition focus. Now, there's there's different level of teleposition focuses. Uh, these are the very lowest levels, so they'd only do a one by one by one. Yeah, one by one by one. And then as you go up, it goes three by three by three, five by five by five, and the, the maximum tier is a seven by seven by seven area. And what they do is when you activate it, it it transpositions the two areas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that, since this is a one by one by one and that is occupied by the node, I'll be able to move that node without hurting it, which is a really good thing. Uh, they also work on entities, which is why you can use them to teleport. Poof. We're just going to telepose this uh, over there, over here real quick, and then I'm going to have to make a couple things for it that I don't have yet. So over here I've built a little little booth, and I've created the this uh, Viz Charge Relay. The, uh, there's, there, okay. This charge, there we go. This charge relay will allow me. Wow, well, that's kind of weird. And with the to, <laughs> with the transparency, it looked really weird. Um, with this charge relay, yeah, it's really hard to see. It's it's two great wood wands, two iron, and 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 an actual viz relay. The viz relay is just some iron around a balance shard really not too difficult to make and then you put that on your work table and what that'll do is it will allow the work table to recharge the wand that's in it from a uh, empowered node so I actually want to move this did I don't remember if I set this or not I'm pretty sure I set that you got to click it on the teleposer in order to set the the coordinates hopefully that's the right coordinates we'll, we'll find out here in a second and then you give just give it a redstone signal. So I just need my button out of there. Give it a redstone signal. I didn't set it. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, so let's. Where is it at? I need to get to focus. See, I forgot to do something real quick. Let's get to focus. Uh, and instead of taking that back, let's go ahead and fly back over there so you can see what the outside looks like because I think it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way it came out, and I hope you guys think the same. Uh, maybe you can give me more ideas of how I can improve on it. I want you to see it. You get over there. Nothing's loading. Things loading slow. Here it is. Oh, there we go. So, this is the White Wizard Tower. Now, obviously, I've got some bricks and stuff in there right now that are going to get replaced and I'll explain why that is here in just a second actually uh, I'll just give you a good view of it that um, cobblestone bridge right there is actually going to get replaced by a bit of an arcing bridge that's going to actually come up to this um, it's going to come up and there'll be a gate or something there some kind of uh, nice door but all those uh, bricks are going to get replaced by um, living stone bricks and the reason I have them in there right now is because those if you look at them you probably recognize what they are those are the part that sticks up out of the ground for a rogue dungeon um, what I did was I fixed one up 
uh, replaced all the broken bits, you know, got rid of all the gravel and cobblestone. And then I went ahead into a single player and I used uh, MC Edit after I fixed that up, MC Edit to make some schematics so that I have the different levels of the tower, different pieces of that tower. Now, originally I was going to use this to make taller towers and use the different segments. That's why there's, it's split up into three different segments. But you see, then I use this to reproduce my parapets in, in the game. So, yeah, MC, uh, M, uh, Schematica is not included with the pack. I did have to add that, so if, you, if you're wondering about that. So um, then I have, that was the entrance. Then, you know, there's the top portion, you know, and there's the, uh, the window portion. And I, I didn't put the uh, I didn't put the bars back in. So yeah, I, I did use some schematica, did some stuff in in, uh, in single player, and so that this would act, that actually made this a lot easier to build in here, uh, rather than having to go run over and look at one, then come back and try to remember what it looked like and build it and stuff. Uh, and then I'm doing some modifications to it, obviously. Uh, change these. I put these half slabs in here, so this is actually a window that you can't get out of. I'll probably do the same here on these other side windows so that all these windows are are you know actual windows and stuff those ones don't go anywhere this is going to be a walkway i'm going to put a i'm going to put a rail along here of some kind so that you can actually walk on it and you won't necessarily go over the edge uh and then let's see two of these i've done the bottom see i haven't done the bottom of this one it's still open uh, but this one i've done the bottom and this is not complete I just basically roughed in what it would take to look correct from the inside. I still haven't finished the outside of it, so that'll I'll get I'll smooth that out a bit later. But now you can come all the way down I don't, into the very basement uh, where the blood magic's at. And I did this one over here too. Okay, and then finally, the top center is another one. We up through the center. Top center is another one on top. And then this up here is uh, my building. My builder's guide. Building guide. I actually used this quite a bit while I was building the uh, the main part, main body of this. And that's how I was using I was using that to keep it um, to keep it circular instead of it divulging into some kind of uh, funky looking octagon. <laughs> So yeah, I think it came out pretty decent. And like I said, I'm, what I'm going to do is, okay, so there's cracked stone, there's moss stone, and there's stone bricks. And if we look, there is living rock. Uh, there's cracked living rock. Where is it at? Somewhere in here. There it is. There's cracked living rock. There's mossy living rock. And then there's... Uh, living rock brick chiseled i like the chiseled rather than the, the just the regular so what i'll do is i'll have somebody come over here with their digital miner and do a swap where it mines up all these bricks and replaces it with the various versions of living rock instead and i can also make living rock stairs so i'll be able to replace all the stair blocks as well should be good uh, the stair blocks is probably going to have to be done by hand. I don't know. I'll try to do it with the digital miner, and I'll let you know if the results, <laughs> if I end up having to do it by hand or not. But there we go. There's the outside of that. And like I said, I think it came out pretty good. Let me know what you think. There's a lot of detail work that needs to be done. I'm going to keep that in mind when you're looking at this. I haven't put in any of the windows, any of the little detail parts that I plan on putting. Uh, and I plan on going back through and, vary and, and throwing in cracked and mossy bricks all around the main part throughout the main part as well so you keep that in mind so uh, but there it is there's the outside shell basically done now let's get back inside before we forget what we were actually trying to do <laughs> but what we actually came over here for is to uh, to reset our teleposer focus so if I just set that to that just click it right click it I mean that should be set to the right one now. And if I go over here, I'll, I'll warn you about this little teleposer the way I have it set up. This works, but I have to have a piece of redstone on both sides. 
Um, otherwise, one side will stop working. Uh, and you have to approach it just right. You have to like actually like approach it from the opposite side that the pressure plate is on. And putting the pressure plate right on top of it doesn't work. <laughs> Tried that because when it when it moves the pressure plate, the pressure plate remains depressed and it comes right back from the other side. So um, that didn't work. That doesn't work so well. Um, I said that's a temporary system. I just needed to be coming back and forth real quick, and I'm using my portal gun for something else right now. So put that in there. Telepose it. Okay, there we go. We got it over here. Good. Now I can just break that. Take that with me. I'm done with that. Now I can start building another node over there if I want. Uh, if I want, but I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm gonna do that just right yet. I might soon because somebody is probably going to want a node personal node for their base and if somebody wants that i'd like to have one ready to go um oh yeah the other reason i can't want to come over here is i want to pick up my payment for some wands uh monkey puzzle asked me to make him a couple of uh, or make him a nice wand and uh give him um uh equal exchange focus let me see Initial payment for the services of a techno wizard from Monkey Puzzle. Uh, wow. That's that's a lot of payment. So ooh, 21 diamonds and like almost a full stack of every one by order, but a couple full stacks of er infused stone. That is super sweet. That's uh, super sweet. Um, so yeah, I moved out I, most of the Batania stuff from over here. Not much left. I'm left with a living rock generator. In fact, I'm actually probably got more living rock than I will ever need. I'll probably tear this down pretty soon, or at least take the automation off of it, because it's really not necessary at this point. I got enough living living rock. Pretty sure. Um, yeah, let's uh, close that up. Head back over. And you gotta be careful about which direction you walk after you pass through it, so you don't accidentally trip it. Go right back over. Like I said, it's a bad system, but I just needed something for temporary, uh, so that can go be put away as well. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to get. Um, well, I need to make the node empowering thingy, and so let's look at that real quick. Let me put this stuff away. That's crazy. I'm gonna be later having to later. I'm gonna be working on that. I think I just put something in there I didn't intend to, but oh well. Uh, we'll put that stuff away. I did make myself a silverwood wand. I said that I wanted to go right to a man infused wand, but then I discovered that I had to make the silverwood wand before I could make the man infused. So we will. Uh, we'll eventually. I will eventually get to that. I don't know if it'll be this episode or not, but um, I think the wand that monkey puzzle wanted was the mana infused wand as well so I will probably do that oh I got a new tab that just showed up just showed up cool I got the eldritch tab because I did um, just recently did a little bit more work warped research uh, I unlocked the brain in the jar by scanning some quicksilver you can also get it by scanning a brain or um, or a zombie brain or an angry zombie, but there's some other research things you have to have unlocked. I'm pretty sure you have to have, well, obviously you have to have the infusion unlocked first. But then I got my infusion enchantments now, so now I can en enchant stuff by using the infusion altar. And I've also got access to the Thaumian Fortress armor. Now I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a set of that. Just if no other reason to have it on an armor stand, but I definitely want to compare the protection of it compared to the blood armor, because the blood armor isn't nearly as OP as it was in 164, which I, I agree with. It, it was way overpowered in 164, but I think it's much more balanced these days. Um, so, look, I need to make... Uh, the reason I opened that... No, there we go. The reason I opened that is I need to make some stuff from here. Here we go, up here. First of all, I need a node stabilizer. Uh, so we need some arcane stones, some blocks of quartz, piston, gold, miter. All right. Let's uh, 
Let's get all that. Should be in here. Miter, yeah. Some arcane, oops, arcane stone. What was the rest of it? Uh, blocks of quartz, the piston. Okay. Should have some extra pistons. Um, did I just see blocks of quartz in one of my... Oh, it's quarried stone. Okay. Quartz. And piston. I think I'm going to need two of these because if I look... What's it take to harness, to make a harness? We'll see. Yeah, I need, I need actually two of these because I need a node stabilizer to make this part in the first place. And then we need a redstone comparator and some blocks of redstone. So I might still have a comparator in here extra. There it is, comparator. And some blocks of redstone. I can just do that here. here. Okay. And finally, what else was it? I think it was just niter, right? Uh, iron. And I am getting very, very low on iron. Now, I did, before I started recording, I did go out and collect a bunch of iron ore, but I need to process it. And, I, you know, up to this point, I've been just going and borrowing someone else's processing system. Uh, usually, it's been uh, Brink the Gamer. He's got a uh, mechanism, three times processing system, open to the public, over at Spawn. So I've just been using that most of the time. But we want to get some magic or processing going today for sure after we get this Viz uh, charging station set up, this wand charging station set up. So first of all, I need to do this. I need two of these. So I actually need two blocks of quartz, or four blocks of quartz total. Uh, that was there. Piston gold. Piston, and I forgot to get the gold out. Always running out of gold, too, because so much stuff, or so much magic, it was dependent on upon having some gold. So that. That, I think the comparator was there. What was the rest of it? Iron and niter. Uh, and I actually need one of those for now. For now. Okay. Uh, so that's what we, that that's pretty much it. That's what we needed. Those two pieces to set up this uh, wand charging station. All right. Uh, let's see here. We can put the node stabilizer down first. Then the node transducer, <clears throat> excuse me, goes on top, just like that. Now, before that will actually start doing its thing, it's going to need a redstone signal. And I'm going to take a page out of one of my uh, old friends that hasn't been doing any YouTube in a long time, but he does a, a really cool thing with this that just looks freaking awesome, in my opinion, uh, which is to take a carpenter's wedge and change it to the... Uh, to a little peak. And if I put that on top of there with a redstone block in it, you can see that it starts to do the transduction transduction process. So um, it's going to drain all of the nose, all the viz out of that, and then it's going to collapse it into um, like a magic hole into the f into the flux. And it'll turn it into a empowered node, which will be able to uh, power up this work table with a viz. With a you know, with viz, and you just gotta wait for it to finish the process. This does take a few moments. Well, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't take too long. Any day now, I want to recharge my wand that I didn't bring with me. Um, I want to stay for the. I don't know if there's anything special that happens when. There you go. 
Well, I guess it does do a little special thing. You can see that it is now beaming power right down into that um, Viz Relay. Except now i got to go get my wand because I left it on the table at the other place. Here, there's one of those times you see I didn't hit it just right. Give me that. And go back. And um, I didn't. I forgot to look at the the values on that. Is it is it six six across the board? No. And actually, a couple of them got seven. So it must have rounded up for a few of those. But that's okay. It's not going to charge uh, Terra and water quite as fast as the rest of them. But as you'll see when I put this in here, it does charge it pretty fast. It's charging it up. Uh, even only with this relatively small node, and I say relatively small because um, I got to show you something here else in here in a second. Well, it's going to take a minute to charge, isn't it? Well, I need it fully charged to do the next thing that I want to do. So I'll let that happen, and I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. I've got a fully charged uh, uh, wand now. We're good. I'm going to need. I put some signs. So free wand charging and thumb crafting. The reason I put thumb crafting is because I'm going to put a crafting uh, scepter in there. Is it called a scepter? What is it called? Is it just crafting wand? No, it's a scepter. Yeah, I'm going to put a crafting scepter in there for anybody that wants to just come here and um, throw together a thumb craft recipe if they if they know it. And that'll work too if I happen to be at the village and somebody wants something Tom crafted. I can just run over there and rather than go all the way back to my place. Uh, oh, yeah. So next thing I want to show you is we're going to come over here to my uh, my wood farm. Yeah, I'm the one that did this. <laughs> I've seen it in a bunch of other people's videos that they found this giant block of wood over here and have fun with it. Um, yeah, this is me. And uh, I use this to get all my charcoal by using the auto smelt uh, lumber axe with uh, with luck on it. See, it's got lapis, so I've got fortune two on it. So I get a ton of charcoal when I do that. I also use it, this regular steel lumber axe, dark steel lumber axe, uh, for when I want to get wood. And you can see here I've got a bunch of wood. And the reason I got those is because, whoops, wrong inventory. I usually keep yeah, some cardboard boxes in here. And we can take one of these with us and right over here you can see i've got a portal now i had to switch my portal gun a little bit so i switched it to the atlas portal gun so that um yeah i don't know which color that really is if that's the darker blue or the lighter blue i think it's the darker blue but anyway i switched to uh, this portal gun because other people started using portal guns and we need to use ones that um won't be common so or I needed to use one that not everybody else is using, so I switched to the Atlas. But anyway, through here, I've got a little setup over here that I want to show you guys that I put together. Uh, I kind of put this together, this little right thing right here with the with the cactus uh, last night before I before I went to bed. And if we look at the node in there, this is obviously a hungry node. You can see how it's trying to suck me in. If we look at the node in there. You can see that I've got the aspects all well over 225. 225 was my goal. Uh, you can go way higher. Uh, you can keep growing it and growing it and growing it. And the way that I'm growing it is I'm bringing over. Here, let me. Okay. First of all, I got this on here to shut off this hopper so that it doesn't accidentally suck up that barrel whenever I uh, break it. So then I would go ahead and put a fresh barrel of wood on there and then I can go ahead and activate it again. Now what I've got here is a crafty crate from Batania. I had to go use Aaron B's um, poor, uh, elf portal again so that's going to be something I need to take care of for, for myself pretty soon so that I don't have to rely on going over to use his portal whenever I need some of those special resources. But uh, I've got myself a nice little crafty crate here and this has the um, uh, what is it called? Crafty something. T Y. That just shows you the crate craft. 
and there we go. These right here, these crafting placeholders can be set up to um, automatically block out certain slots when you use these crafty crates. A little, they're a little bit of a challenge to use. And what they do is when they receive the items, uh, once the, the empty slots are full, it'll try to do whatever the crafting recipe is. Excuse me. So uh, this one right here, you can see it's only a single slot. It's going to take the wood and turn it into planks. And, the, and when once it does its crafting operation, it just drops the item out of the bottom of it, kind of like a uh, open crate. So it's, a, it's an open crate, but it can craft something. Um, and then this one down here is set up with four little grids. So as it receives items, it's going to fill in those from uh, left to right. One, two, and that one's blocked, so it's going to come down here next. So one, two, and then the rest of them are blocked. So that actually is going to go, since this is dropping out planks of wood, these slots are going to get filled with planks of wood, and it's going to make a crafting bench. So let's go ahead and turn it on. You can see it work. You can see it just drops, just sucks uh, the wood out turns it into into planks, drops it into this hopper. And you're probably wondering, um, well, first of all, let me take off my magnet so it continues to work while I'm close to it. Uh, and you're probably wondering why I have these Ender IO conduits here. Well, that is because this hopper up here is dropping at whatever rate a hopper drops stuff into. This thing is turning that one item into four items. So this hopper is getting items four times faster than it can output items. So what I have it doing is these Ender IO conduits are taking up the extra items and getting them into the crafting crate just as fast as they can be as they can be uh, or as they enter the hopper. So for every one that comes into that hopper, um, four come out of this hopper and go into this crafty crate and then drop in drop in the uh, crafting tables. Crafting tables. And the reason you use and the reason you use crafting tables is because the aspects on a crafting table, which is, um, if we look, here we can we can pick up a crafting table. There we go. Uh, if we look, it is the, uh, I don't know, what is that called? Fabrico? Fabri, fabrito? Fabriquito? Well, something like that. And um, when, when you break that down, it basically contains some of all of the six primary aspects. So... Whenever you drop a crafting table into a hungry node, a hungry node can only get primary aspects. The uh, um, the, the the grinny face in there—I can't remember what that one is. Um, famous, famous, I think. That one was in the node when it was spawned, and that's fine. But whenever it sucks up an item, that that famous is not going to affect what I plan on doing with it. Whenever it sucks up an item it has a small chance of increasing one of the base aspects from the aspects that that item contained. Hopefully that makes perfect sense. Uh, so well, first of all, I can go ahead and get rid of this stuff. I'm done with all that. I think it probably went right into there. Some of it did anyway. Oh, some of it's just standing on top of the thing here. Okay, we'll pick that up. And I'm actually ready to tear this down, so I'm not going to bother letting this um, finish doing its thing over here. I'm actually going to box this back up, and I'm going to start breaking this thing down. Um, before I get too far, I want to cover this hole up so I don't lose any of these things. Because I want to keep the crafty crates, the hoppers, and all the rest of the stuff. But I wanted to show it to you before I uh, broke it, so let's uh, let's uh, break these. We will pick all this other stuff up. And let's put our ring back on. That'll help. Can I reach that? There we go. There we go. Did anything fall down here? Something did. Oh. See, if I don't, if I'm not flying, I can't, I can't escape the gravity of this thing. Fortunately, with the the speed upgrades on my boots plus the sigil or the sojourner sash i can easily get out of the gravity of that hole if you don't have something like that you might not be able to escape the gravity so easily now i kind of need to leave that there because that's my way home <laughs> actually what 
Actually, I don't need to leave it there because I have my portal. I can just make a new one once once I'm yeah once I'm done breaking all this stuff down. So now that I okay, I want to be careful too not to fall into that hole. It's okay if any of this stuff gets sucked up. This stuff's just yeah does not matter. Okay, and then down here you can see where I've got. Ugh. Hold on, let me out. Let me out. You see where I've got this hole. And there's only a one by one hole down in there. So if I did accidentally fall in there, I would not get sucked into the node. But what I want to do is land on the platform right here. And I need to break a couple bits of this uh, obsidian because it's not part of the plan. So I get these up out of there. Get that. Can I get that one from here? No, not quite. Obviously, I'm going to have to see. It's just a one by one hole, so I'm okay. Well, let me break that one out there first so I have some place to stand while I break the last one. And there we go. And I'm stuck to the bottom again. Uh, well, that's okay. So, what I need to do finally, for the final thing, I need to go ahead and place. An obsidian there. It's hard to even see it because the node is so bright and strong that it just kind of. But if I get back a little bit, you can kind of see that that is a solid uh, three by three of obsidian around it. You know what? I don't know if I brought enough glass, but that's okay. I got a I got a way to solve that, and I can make myself some spruce. I need slabs. Do I have slabs in here by any chance? No. I used up all my stops. But that's okay. I can make those too. Well, I've got a crafting table, so we'll just use the crafting. Too close. <laughs> I'm sliding away. I'm over here a little bit. Um, hopefully somebody will sleep. I don't know if uh, I don't know if Kiwi is is is. Well, he might not even care about sleeping because he's probably inside working. Uh, but now at this point, I need to add these guys to the top. You probably know what I'm doing here by now. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to capture this node. Now in order to capture it I'm going to need glass. So let's see if we got some regular glass in here. Not nearly enough but that's okay. I'll show you why. Well, let's go ahead and put pretty much I'll put pretty much everything in there that I'm not currently that, that isn't too important. What are you doing down there, zombie? Get out of my video. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's find... Um, put that away. Uh, all this stuff away. Just in case. I need the glass. I don't need that empty barrel, the lever. That's food. It doesn't matter that much. I need to keep... Uh, you know what, just so that I don't lose these tools in case something really hap really nasty happens, I'm going to put them in there for now. Um, and I don't have to worry about any losing anything in the ender pouch because that, that's located someplace else. So go ahead and put that in there. I need the angel wing. That focus bag doesn't have anything in it, but I don't really need it right now. I need to have the mana tablet. And I don't need those two things. Okay, so all I need is glass, my wand, and I'm going to leave my armor on because that's going to protect me from mobs or whatever, anything else bad that might happen. Uh, glass. I keep saying glass. So if I take my steel lumber axe that has smelting on it, auto smelting on it, and I break sand, that will get glass. Isn't that awesome? If you do, if you put auto smelting... On, oh, I don't have a weapon. Uh, let me see if I can get Mystic Sleep. Or uh, Casual. I think Casual. Well, either guys. Either of them guys. If one of them guys could sleep, then I can. Uh, won't have to worry about mobs while I'm also trying to do something relatively dangerous. Make sure I have enough. 
Let's see, it's uh, going to take like 20-something. Do I hear a creeper? No, I don't think so. And P there, apparently they're both AFK or missed what I said. <laughs> I'm just going to press on though. So I want to get this done. Okay, I definitely have enough glass. Well, first of all, oh good, somebody, somebody did. Somebody did find asleep. So first of all, I need to set the wand to glass. So I want to replace the obsidian with glass. And then I'm going to click it again. And I'm going to encapsulate it. Oh, that. That guy's got to go. Definitely cannot have that guy while I'm trying to do this. Where'd I put my stuff? Oh, I put it in with the plants, didn't I? Yeah, there it is. Uh, okay, you got to go. Is he gone? Let's just get rid of the... Let's get rid of that creeper because that could be super bad. Alright, I think we're good now. We'll just... I don't know if I have that helmet yet or not, but there's another creeper. Okay, we good. Nothing new. Nothing nearby. Doesn't look like it. All right. Put these away. And again, this is gonna be a long episode again, as usual. But oh well. <laughs> all right. So all I got to do is click the obsidian, wait for it all to turn to glass, and then click one of the glass again, and hope that the uh, hungry node does not eat any of the glass pieces while I'm waiting for them to switch. There we go. And it's captured. That went quite well. Wow, look at that. That is crazy. That is really... It's, it's so bright, it's outside the jar. <laughs> Alright, I like it. Okay, so we are safe again. We are now 100% safe. Right? I hope so. I sure hope so. Well, anyway, I'm going to get my tools and stuff back out. The really tricky part is when we unbottle this and we're going to be doing that inside the base. So that could be super, super duper dangerous. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, probably want to have some obsidian on hand. I think there's some steps I can take to minimize the risk. And I'm going to do that. So let me, now, now that that part's done, I'll just, I'm going to take a, a quick jump. And I'm going to come back. Actually, i got to get my portal out. I'm going to come back after I've got the setup ready to unlock the power of a hungry node. All right, I'm back at my base. I've got the items that I need crafted, the transducer and the uh, stabilizer. And I've picked up one of the stabilizers from over there just in case uh, something goes really bad. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm actually building another obsidian cage just like so so the stabilizers in there on the bottom uh, the tops covered uh, and then I've got this kind of thing over here on the edge on the side here so if I do if it does somehow manage to eat the node stabilizer before before the node stabilizer has a chance to kick in I can put another one in there and a worst case scenario, if it eats two node stabilizers, I can seal it up in obsidian and then come back and uh, uh, and try again with more node stabilizers. <laughs> well, here goes nothing. Uh, I sure hope my base is okay. Let's do this. Come on, stabilize, stabilize, stabilize. Is it stabilized? Oh, don't tell me it keeps its gravity even though it's stabilized ah it ate the stabilizer oh now it's eating the cobblestone out of the bottom Arr. maybe I need to have the transducer in there too I'm thinking that's what I need to do is have the transducer on the top first uh this is bad. That's going to take forever to eat that too, or to, to stabilize too. Oh, come on, let me get, get away. Get away, get away, get away. Oh, that's really bad. Uh, let me put a piece of obsidian in that bottom hole before something gets sucked up through it. Ugh. I 
totally missed where I wanted to put that. No, no, I got it. It hit it right. Um, hmm. So I got to get the trans... I hope we can't suck anything in from over here. I've got to get the transducer on the top. Uh, for this to work. I wonder... Let me see something here real quick. I don't know if I can set my wand to equal exchange the transducer. That, uh, let's see if I try to set that. Why did it say it pick? Oh, nope, it didn't work. Didn't change it. Did not change. Ooh, so I've got to do something in order to break that one piece of obsidian that I put up on there. Uh, actually, I can just cobble it out, cobble switch it out. Uh, the question is, is yeah, see, I don't want to be able to get up on top. So what I need to do is um, put a piece of obsidian right there. There we go. So that way I can't fall in that hole. Uh, cobble that out. There we go. So there we go. I can't fall in there. That's good. Um, and then I need to take, gosh, I hate to put the transducer there. Let me put the stabilizer on first. That's going to be a little bit difficult. Oh, come on. Ah. Maybe if I hold the back key while I'm sliding in there. There we go. Trans. Now that it ate it already. Oh goodness, this is gonna be a lot harder than I thought. Let's get a piece of obsidian where it just pulled that cobble out. This is gonna be harder than I thought. All right, I'm gonna have to come back and tackle that. And I mean, I'll, I will, I will, I'll record it. But um, I'm gonna come back and tackle that a little bit later. Uh, for now, it's just going to sit there. <laughs> That's dangerous. I can charge my wand off of it if I needed to. Unfortunately, it can't suck that obsidian in uh, ever, so we're good there. Uh, but there's one kind of, a couple of other final things I wanted to show you. I think I jumped up here already and showed you the Batania a little bit. Move my Batania set up over here. And I changed up the mana spreaders to the Dreamwood mana spreaders. Again, I used the materials that I got from going over to Aaron B's uh, portal. And that's how I got my Dreamwood mana spreaders. We're going to have to, like I said, we're going to have to get a gate up here, an elven gate, uh, on one of these sides. And one of these sides is going to be an elven gate. We're going to get that uh, pretty soon. And changed up the thing. It's pretty much only an automatic load now. I don't have manual load anymore. And I extended out the redstone basically uh, to almost the maximum. I could go, I could have went one more, but I didn't want to. I noticed that when I went to the very maximum, I would uh, it would end up using, um, it would end up spitting out a piece of coal before it shut off. So this should be good right here. Now you can see it's shut off because it's full. And what I had to do in order to get the uh, mana spreader to work from this distance is I had to add a lens. And this is actually a compound lens. I put the velocity and the resistance. So the velocity makes it go faster because if it doesn't have the velocity, it, it can't keep up with the mana production of the four flowers. And then because I have the velocity, it starts to lose power about right here when it fires. So that's what the, uh, that's what the other thing does, the resistance. That lets it go the full distance without losing any power. So you can go all the way over here without losing any power, and it shoots pretty big. Um, bolts of mana, <laughs> basically, because it's a better spreader. And uh, yeah, this is going to make me make my rituals go a little bit faster. You can see I've got open crate up on top of there, and that is because I'm going to use that to set up an automation using the programmer Redmond controller. And what it's going to do is eventually, because I got to make all these runes all the time, right, for different crafting recipes, and then I've got stuff that I want to do 
uh, in the uh, forbidden magic, like the uh, the Dreamwood Wand and stuff like that. That uh, where is it at? Down here. Nope. Down. There we go. Um, the Living Wood Wand requires all these runes all the time. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could just come up here, push a button on a wall, and it would drop all the stuff I needed to make the rune. Um, I might even be able to set it all the way up so that it would actually go ahead and once it charged up, or, or you know, craft the rune as well. So I think I can do all of that with the Rednet controller and channels. So I know it's a little techno technology, but I am a techno wizard, so I think the Rednet controller is fan game. And I'm probably going to see if I can get it to work with uh, Ender IO uh, Rednet uh, channels. Hopefully that'll work. If not, then I'll have to use the regular Rednet cables. But uh, I, those that are a little bit harder to hide. I was hoping to use the Ender IO ones just because it would make it look nicer, the build nicer when I'm done. So. Uh, between that, a bunch of droppers, a bunch of hoppers, and um, maybe a dispenser or two, we should be able to get this fully automated. Uh, but I think I'm probably out of time at this point, so I'm going to leave you guys... Ooh, it ate a piece of living stone from up there. Oh yeah, because it can see around this block. Well, that's okay. It's going to eat a little bit of the base. <laughs> oh well. Um... I'm going to leave you guys with uh, one question. So I've got this. I've got some quarry stone here for you to look at. Now I'm getting sucked in from over there. And some marble. I'm a little partial to the quarried stone for the floor. But I wanted to ask you guys, what do you guys think? Should I use the marble? Should I use a chiseled version of the marble? Or should I use the quarry stone? There's also some other versions of the quarry stone. But I think the actual raw quarry stone looks the best out of those. Or should I go with a dark? floor like use basalt or something like that i was kind of looking at basalt as well basalt yeah there's a couple different versions of basalt as well so there's uh, the batania basalt and there's the blue power basalt and the blue power basalt ha isn't quite as dark it's like a really dark gray that i could use if i use the brick paver there's also this funky basalt marble tile i don't think that would quite look right I think that I think my eyes would bug out too much. Um, so, what do you guys think? Should I use marble, cord stone, or something else? You know, give me your suggestions in the comments. So, anyway, guys, I'm gonna wrap that up. Uh, don't forget to check out the other folks' channel that I play on the server. There's lots of uh, cool builds, cool things going on. Everybody's moving out of uh, the spawn area and starting their big mon, uh, big mega builds. There's lots of big mega builds gonna be happening. So be sure and check those other channels out. And until next time, I will catch you later.